try to say was uh, the players get dependent. Uh, tell them you please go and play. <laughs> In the night also, just four, five hours. Yes. Stop. Just take help of the experts because the feedback the parents gave to yeah. this. Uh, this talks yeah, so between. Parent plays the most important role in a in a sportsman or player. See uh, the belief that sports and academics. For John and. See every day there are so many My things. Coach Tipasa, who always motivated me. I was. There were other riders also. Seventy percent of my sessions for preparing on my strength. You know, like the physical fitness is very crucial when you are actually playing in a tournament. I think the one of the key things is that uh, be courageous. Okay, so devotion is, I think, a much greater. Level of uh, reason is uh, my family upbringing and family background. So the coach has a different mindset. That protein supplementation, and there are several uh, ways to. Everybody has a conscious, subconscious, and unconscious mind. Uh, the motto is not to be the first Indian or the come best to my country to Iman and play as junior. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sports Champ Live Talk Show, a live journey of an athlete. I am Bhushan Thakur, founder and editor in chief of Sports Champ, a sports education magazine, and your host for today's live talk show. Today, we have a very special guest with us, who is the first driver in the world to win race using synthetic feet. Having been born with a deformity during birth, he had undergone bilateral amputation. Yet, he is never into para athlete sports. He refuses to use modified cars and faces the challenges in the open wheel ca car category. He is Mr. Chetan Korada. Let me quickly take you through his achievements. Welcome to the show, Chetan, and thank you for accepting my invitation. Hi, Bhushan. Thank you so much for a lovely introduction. Um, I had a big smile while I was watching it. So, and thank you for having me on your show. I'm, I, I was, I've been very excited to be here. So, I'm glad that thank we're here today. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Chetan. And as you know, as a as per our sport jam challenge, uh, we start with. Uh, I'll give you four words, and you have to instantly tell me what first thing comes in your mind after listening to those words. Okay. So I hope you are ready. Should. Okay, fantastic. So my first word to you is attitude. Right. Right. Has to be right attitude all the time. Stay right all the time. Super skills. Has to be explored. Um, within you know, every day and every moment. Okay. Uh, knowledge. It's endless. It's an. I would say it's universe. You keep knowledge keeps coming in. You know, you have to keep taking it. Correct. Correct. Uh, quality. Quality. Uh, maintaining the best at every moment and giving it all you have. Super, super. Uh, so Chetan, first, uh, my first question to you is that uh, how you have developed this attitude of accepting challenges and enjoying pain, as you have experienced blood oozing out of the wounds in your childhood days, and also get wounded while racing due to artificial legs. So, how did this uh, attitude got developed? Um, since I was born with this deformity, I really, w I would say I was fortunate that way it, it came in the beginning. So I had to live with it. You know, eventually when, you know, I would say we go through pain, 
in different ways because pain is just a state of mind i would say happiness sadness even pain is just a state of mind you just need to get over it so sometimes you know we watch a movie when we're so sad to make ourselves happy you know we got various various things you know so sometimes i would say doing what keeps me alive i would say motor sports especially just makes me forget pain so okay. i've accepted the uh, pain you know at a very early age um i was brought up by a very strong lady so my mother uh, who stands responsible for everything in all my achievements today um so she made me she started to you know believe that i'm going to be a somebody and just not going to be a nobody there so the initial training what an infant you know a newborn would get i got the same started walking at the same age of any kid would walk it's just that you know i considered my uh, the wooden legs back then we call it uh, the jaipur foot as my flesh and bone and today i think i'm having a carbon fiber today <laughs> so i got i got i could change my part of body you know every 2 or 3 years the way i wanted so Correct. so that is how you developed it uh, uh chetan what challenges you face to develop skill set of car racing as you have refused to use modified cars and accept to face challenge in open car category yeah um well i studied in a school um, it's it's from the foundation of uh, krishnamurthy foundation of india it's called the school mm-hmm. you know they i think uh, they installed the, the they installed the right mindset okay. in me okay but at home i had my mother who always inspired me to fight it forward just like anybody else out there okay. while well, the school i studied was uh, quite encouraging my my schoolmates my teachers you know they played an important role i would say even after so many years i still remember them and we stay in touch so i i would actually uh, give them a lot of credit because i participated in every sport possible in school participated in every sports meet okay. also participated in inter school competitions in basketball so um when i accepted the prosthetics to be a part of me i found a way to live with it i didn't find a difference between me and others in fact i would push myself to be better there every time i went for a for a running race let it be playing a match of tennis or a game of basketball i never had in mind that i was differently able okay i just felt normal so i will say my childhood played a very important role to what i am today this probably set the right mindset so uh chetan i want to know when you say the school has set the right mindset or installed the right mindset what what you are trying to uh, uh, tell me on this en- encouraging me in things which the world would say impossible okay okay and you know because i never had a doubt that i i couldn't do it you know the okay. whole idea was to try it and you would know whether you could you were going to achieve it or not so the first move always mattered and that happened in my childhood so i participated in everything i saw so i just felt normal always uh how difficult it was to get a motor racing license uh, it was very it was very difficult because well running around and playing cricket basketball was different from motor sports correct Well, back then, I don't think there were proper rules for uh, a proper uh, driving license for differently able people. You know. Yes. Um, and later on, I managed to get my driving license after my test and so on. But uh, coming to motorsports, it was my mother who encouraged me uh, the most to get into motorsports. We have nobody else in the family who's who belongs to motorsports, so I was the first one to enter the sport. my mother always loved cars and she enjoyed speed so much so yeah. um i remember she used to take me for go karting and cuz she she uh, came from a very challenging financial background while we were growing up and she could still afford to you know take take me for karting and give me that feel of you know the tra- racing in a very smaller way and um, when i entered the circuit in 2007 it was uh, during the track day 
in Madras Motor Sports, uh, in a Madras Motor Racing Track. So I call it my second home. So okay. that's where, uh, so I entered the circuit for the first time and my eyes popped out. I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going to start my career. You know, if, if I'm, I mean, I had my fingers crossed because I still didn't sit in a racing car yet. I just entered a circuit. Correct. But I was so dazzled with everything around me, literally everything. I'm like, I want to be here. This is what I think I'm going to enjoy. Probably this is uh, what this is where Chetan Kurada is going to get his identity. Correct. And I was I was quite uh, surprised um, by the encouragement with a few people on the circuit who said, you know, you should actually sit in a race car and try it. You know, you could rent one of those cars, sit and try. You never know. You know, with the whole attitude of you know, try it, maybe you can. So I did, you know, I, I first, you know, took five minutes to sit inside the car. I mean, uh, not to get into the car. I mean, I was watching from the outside, wondering if I can actually slip inside the cockpit. And I said, okay, go on. I got my turn. And the moment I got into the car, oh, it felt so comfortable. Wow. It felt so comfortable that, you know, I, after my session of driving, well, that was an amazing experience. When I came back into the pits, I asked the team manager if I could sit inside the car for longer. <laughs> it felt so nice, you know, stretching myself and it feels so comfortable in that cockpit. And I was always lean built since then. So I decided, okay, this probably is a sign that I have to take this seriously. I, I didn't feel uncomfortable in the car. I was able to drive a race car, which yeah. had uh, manual, uh, manual gears. You know, you got your hitch pattern gearbox there. I was able to drive it perfectly well and without spinning the car. So okay. I, I got again the little confidence. I ran back home. I told my mother I want to start racing, and she was excited more than me. She said, "You should go go ahead." So the first race I actually um, enrolled was in the JKT National Racing Championship. Without even going for the Junior Cup, I went in straight into that and tried the Formula Hyundai, which was a thousand five cc. It was it was a national championship, you know. Straight away, your debut in that was it could it could be a little scary. Correct. Instead of messing around in the lower lower categories. But did you got any guidance there, or do you, do you uh, took your own decisions to? Uh, no, I just I just got in touch with uh, the the team owner, and okay. we had a chat. I did some practice session, and they gave me uh, a form to apply for my racing license. So that, okay. that's why I'm going to answer your question now. So yes. I got my uh, racing, um, I mean, license application. I got it filled. I submitted. And I believe the license was ready and it came to the circuit. But I was called to the medical center. OK. OK, so I thought, OK, it's so a formality. First year, I think they call everyone. I went in there and they asked me to remove my prosthetics. It was quite a shock because oh. I was always, I would say, I was quite conscious about um, people looking at my prosthetics back then. I'm like, hey, I'm normal. Why should I be, you know, sometimes people don't notice that I have, pro I'm walking on two artificial limbs. Correct. I don't use clutches. I've never sat on a wheelchair, never wanted to. So when they asked me to remove my prosthetic, I was quite in a shock and I was young. So I I couldn't utter a word, but I just did it. And um, they What was they the said, age? No. What was the age was, that time? Uh, I was, I, I believe I was 19. Okay. I entered in pretty late. I should have gotten a little earlier, but 19 was still scary back then for a sport I never knew earlier, which that existed in India. Correct. I, watching Formula One, I, I was not aware of the circuits here. So I, I was quite scared that I, I wouldn't be granted a license. And uh, yes, and the doctor said, you know, we honestly can't give you a license because we feel it's dangerous. I said, dangerous for who? They said for the other drivers. I said, how is it going to be? He said, what if you're not able to um, modulate your brakes or your throttle and you could co cause collision to other drivers? And while I was still stuck in um, that whole, I was, I was under the trauma of, you know, I didn't know what to tell them. Uh, that's when I see a lot of team owners and a lot of people from uh, MMSC who walked in and actually told, told the doctors that they watched me practice. And they said I can drive. So I was I was put under observation for the first uh, weekend. They said if I I managed to finish the races, I would be given my license. 
yes and i started and i finished the races with uh, by gaining some positions also and i was given the license and the very next year um things changed and i was glad that i was able to contribute into that that even if uh, anybody is differently able but still has a free movement of the limbs and hands can still race so that's added on to the application form so i i was i had i had a smile you know i was hoping that you know some day i would be having differently able people coming in and, and i could be um probably mentor them some day so uh, chetan uh, tell me this uh, as you are the first in the world as it is mentioned or uh, uh, so why uh, others are not able to participate or they are not taking that chance what is the reason well that's actually a, a very good question um, not many have asked me in depth there are other differently able drivers across the globe in fact we have the faa disability and accessibility commission which is headed by uh, Miss Natalie McLoin, and uh, so so she's uh, quite a prominent uh, person there, and she's doing a great job of promoting uh, that whole commission there. So I was glad that I'm the only Indian and probably the only Asian who's still racing there, you know, who's differently able. But when I actually looked into the other drivers, everybody had hand hand controls. They had a, either a throttle or a brake or maybe both. If let's say if they're paralyzed in the bottom half of the body, they really don't have any movement in the leg they have hand controls to help them and 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 trust me they're not slow put them on to other normal cars they could go probably chasing them like let's say billy monga and i would say back then my inspiration was alex zanadi um the italian driver who lost his legs uh during a indy car race and he actually got back into racing and motorsports in just two years and he drove for the world touring car championship and um I I think uh, he played quite a big role which motivated me in uh, taking up my dream more seriously and that's one um I for I I decided that you know if I can walk around if I can run around like a normal person I might as well drive it like a normal person and feel what the other drivers feel the same pressure correct so uh, my only my I still my the question remains the same that why this others are not able to take that decision like what if But you have I, got inspired mm. you got inspired because you have your your mom was behind you generally uh, you don't see this in many of the families that mom is the one who avoids uh, vehicles so <laughs> that is what is generally seen but uh, here yeah. in your case it is the other way around so uh, how like how do you think this can uh, this can uh, come in the motor sports Yes, as I said earlier, people are uh, restricted uh, according, you know, as per their uh, deformity. Correct. Yeah. So now, let's say somebody who's not got a single arm but has a prosthetic arm can still able to steer, can use the other hand for more controls. So maybe me, I since I had a below knee amputation, I really didn't uh, lose much except my ankles and my feet. i don't have my ankle and feet so i still have a little bit of my knee um and and i would say i don't have ligaments which i take okay. it as an ad- advantage because i don't get lig- ligament tears anymore in my life so <laughs> okay yeah. so i've always uh, made sure that i've strengthened my calves and my little bit of my knee which is left and of course i modulate a lot with my thigh so i was able to give that same pressure as any other driver into the brake say let's say 80 to 90 bars of brake pressure which is like 80 kilos to 90 kilos okay. you know yeah so i was able to do it just normally so i i didn't feel that i needed an extra advantage to feel that extra comfort i think i was i was fine with it super uh, uh... your mom has supported you a lot so do you had any uh, your family has a sports background or your father or your someone in your family who have come through or you are the first one as as a sports person um when my mother used to play sports in school back then okay and okay. my father was um, a gold medalist in uh, hurdles okay. back then he was a national athlete athlete and uh, well otherwise everybody at home including my younger brother who's a chartered accountant everybody is into some kind of fitness or sport you know they play badminton but not at a professional level but just to keep themselves 
um, up and energized all the time. So they make sure they're in touch with their fitness every day. Okay. So, but not into any uh, uh, professional serious sports or serious uh, sports. No, I was the first one. That way I'll be the first one in the family. And okay. looking at my whole interest towards motorsports and the kind of passion I had towards cars from my very childhood. Correct. And they, they gave all the encouragement and support. Fantastic. Uh, Chetan, walk us through your first victory experience in junior category and then driving in the presence of lakhs of people and winning multiple trophies. So how oh, was yes. this journey all about? Oh, yes. I remember my first uh, race, which was in 2000. Um, I think the first race a podium was in 2008 in the Junior Cup. So right. 2007, I drove the Formula Hyundai. And then I decided, OK, this is too much. I need to start and learning something in the lower categories. And I just okay. got excited by the car. You know, I just jumped into it. But um, I got more confidence from after, you know, moving to a lower car the very next year. But let's remember, I had no proper training. All I know is just a road car driving. So I got into the car and um, th I, that was in the Formula Maruti in the JK Tire Junior Cup. OK. And I, I, I managed to get a third place. Okay. Of course, someone in front of me spun, so eventually I came third. <laughs> so, but don't it? It is it. Gen, it it generally doesn't happen, I guess. What you are saying, my, no, it doesn't uh, happen all the time. But I would say yeah. that actually gave me that a little bit of you know encouragement that hey, it's okay. Even you can make it to a podium. Yes. Yes. So that's when in two thousand nine, um, I went for a training program uh, in Coimbatore. Okay. And uh, Miko, uh, Miko uh, racing with uh, Akbar Ibrahim back then. So I, got, I, got, I understood the fundamentals of race car driving. You know, I understood this how a race car should be driven, basically. Correct. And I jumped into the Summer Cup in 2009, which was hosted by the Madras Motorsports Club. Okay. And we had six races, I remember, and I had five wins and one second place. I lost it on that uh, the last win. Uh, because one of my plugs came out and I ran on, it's a three cylinder, so I had to run on two cylinders and okay. I managed to finish the race in second. So it was five wins and one second place out of six. So that gave me a boost in, my, in the confidence. I said, you know, I need to take this more seriously. And at the same time, um, my mother let me pursue my DJing career back then because I studied audio engineering. I like music, so I thought music and racing went hand in hand but eventually understood that was a very bad choice it was a bad combination <laughs> so i had to move move completely into motorsports so 2010 i did some junior cups and drove a couple of national uh, national practice sessions and all those in 2011 was my i came back to the national championship a proper national championship where i competed in all the weekends because back in 2007 was just one weekend i participated just for the experience but in 2011, when I uh, competed, we had 24 cars on the grid in the JK Tire National Racing Championship. And uh, there were over 10 national champions on the grid already. They're lined up ahead of me in the, from the qualifying. And I started 12th. I remember very well the first lap I was, I dropped down to 18th. So this whole uh, thing, you know, the fear inside, you know, is like there's so many uh, superior drivers around you and, you know, the, you get sidelined. And I just um, followed and I just got in mind like the key, um, I would say it's a quality which I always had was kind of maintain consistency in whatever I did. That's something which my mom always pushed me to do, you know, be consistent in whatever you do. And even during my training, I learned that, you know, staying consistent every lap can eventually take me forward. So and that really happened. I was not the fastest on the track, not even in the top five. But Correct. I was probably just um, over one to one and a half second off from the fastest guy. But I managed to do the same lap time every single lap. And eventually ended up winning the race. I think that is equally true in life also. That if you're consistent, true. if you're consistent off the track also, and your achievements can definitely, you can it, the growth will definitely happen. Yeah, so consistency is the key. Super. Uh, on each day of the comp competition, you follow a principle of analyzing your performance and your competitors, which has helped you in your career and in personal life. 
so can you throw some light on the same i would say i will learn the most from my competitors than my friends okay and eventually you realize they are the real friends because they taught you the most and you start valuing them more correct and um, i would say the competitors uh, at least in the beginning years really didn't know about my deformity they were not no, they was, were not knowing it it was it was only very few people on the circuit it was not really spoken of so you can understand um yes uh, that it was not heard back then that you know there was a differently able person so nobody spoke about it and and even of course they were they have always appreciated my achievements and my podiums out there when i was in the circuit correct and my my competitors never knew that you know i had a deformity but it was always about giving them a tough run and trying to be the best out there correct super and how much this foreign exposure helped you in your career and how much it is important for any sports person in uh, their life journey oh uh, well actually that that um, play i think that whole question you know brings back a lot you know from the whole journey because uh, i would say the most um i would say of course we were fortunate having some uh, icons in indian motor sports we have narin kartik again we have karun chandok okay. and we have you know um jahan jahan darwala right now you know he's making uh, you know great results arjun mining and a lot of the drivers who went up there setting examples but you know when you talk about all these names you know they probably had good backgrounds you know to actually afford international motor sports correct you know because uh, motor sports is expensive it's not it's not cheap you know every screw and every engine you know every component you know we're talking about probably hundreds or a thousand comp components in a car correct. so we're spending a lot of money and uh, going abroad so it's probably not affordable to a lot of people and even for a lot of people who had the money never knew how to go there hmm. so we did lack some guidance but uh i managed to do my homework but by the time i did my homework it was very late um i think when i started racing in 2007 it was only in 2018 i went for my first testing abroad so it took me 10 years uh but in 2012 i remember i drove the jk racing asia series but that that happened in india okay during the formula 1 uh race weekend at the buddh international circuit uh, we were the support series so i i really didn't have great results but i managed to finish all the races and it was quite a tricky car because driving a, a indian make car was more easier than let's say an international made car okay. uh, it was the formula bmw and i found it hard to actually start left foot braking using my left foot for brake i've always been used to my right foot so i couldn't really take that pressure but it was it was a realization that you know i need to step up i need to get prepared i never felt that you know i should stop it there correct i stepped up because i knew that i want to get into international racing i was i was quite desperate that you know the only way is probably if you're stepping out you you'll be known correct so and uh, in 2015 i met this uh, man called peter allnut who's um, been the technical director of uh, MRF and um, and a lot of series of the MRF 1600s and the formula 2000 and he was been responsible for building a lot of race cars which ran internationally okay. having experience of 50 years in motor sports so he managed to you know we managed to meet during a testing when i first tested the formula MRF 1600 which is a proper race car with wings you know that's when you realize it's it's a racing car otherwise we just sit in a box of course yes. I won quite a, quite a lot of races in the boxes and I really like that. But not talking about a proper formula car I met him and I did some homework before I went there on the driving and I would say he was quite impressed by the the way I drove because I managed to match up to the fastest the the, the champion the pain the same year's champions timings on my first test. So we managed to connect well. He understood my situation of uh, what I really wanted to achieve and what kind of support I was looking for. and he was he's he was quite kind enough to actually give me that kind of guidance on my driving styles and changing it to i would say from the indian driving styles to the international driving styles there's a lot of difference okay. you know 
driving on international circuits and making me understand uh, more about cars itself. Yes. So, and um, she started mentoring me since then. And um, back then it was uh, Vicky Chandok. Um, and uh, he actually, he was owning this team called Wallace Sports. It's, it's still going on. And then you've got Wallace Sports around. His son is Karan Chandok, who's recently yeah. become uh, one of the board members in the British motor racing there. Wow. And he's also a Formula One commentator who keeps you know, keeps making us proud every single time he's on screen there. And I, I'm so proud that I actually graduated from his team. Vicky Chando gave me a lot of opportunities. He put me as instructors in various programs in uh, Tata Prima truck racing programs and made me participate in the Mercedes-Benz Young Star Driver Challenge. Correct. Where uh, I think over 2,900 entries and I was in the top five there. Wow. And and then so Vicky Chandok was the pre, was the chairman of the MRF uh, challenge, which was an Indian make international series. Okay. Yeah, the cars are built in Coimbatore, as in assembled in Coimbatore, all carbon fiber, a proper F3 spec car. Now when people hear F3 is like guys pop out like it's F3, and now since it's made in India, it's three times cheaper than an actual car in, in Asia. <laughs> so experience is the same because we, uh, I, I got an opportunity to, um, you know, work with international engineers and mechanics. Correct. I understood the way they work. I understood the professional side of motorsports. Well, uh, before I got into the Formula 2000s, uh, Peter Allnett made me drive the P Formula 1600 uh, for a couple of years. Where I remember in 2017 also I was chasing for a championship and I finished third in the championship there in the Formula 1600s. Because uh, once when I had a chat with uh, Naren, Naren Karthi and he said, you know, you, you need to step up, leave all these smaller categories and you need to step up, you know, you just can't be stubborn. And when I met him during the event and I jumped into the Formula 1600s. He said, the moment you take top threes, you can move into F2000. I started taking podiums there in 1600. Wow. And the very same year, I booked my seat in the Formula 2000. And the first international race was, wow, because I was the only Indian out there in the grid. <laughs> had all international drivers. And yes. half my age. <laughs> they, were, they were probably half my age. And... And it was quite hard to keep up with them because they spend literally 300 days a year on a circuit. Wow. Well, you know, it's it's quite tough, you know, it's practically not possible in India. So yes. at least these days we are spending time on simulators. Correct. So I drove two seasons of the International Challenge and I'm looking forward to be uh, either driving the Asian Touring Car Cup or and maybe we have another series which people will know soon. Um, Correct. Chetan, uh, now you have started your own company. So what is your company vision considering motorsport development in India? Yeah, QMS, Quest Motorsports was initiated uh, in 2021 this year. So of course, with um, I would say our mentor and uh, the person who initiated is Mr. Peter Allnut, who worked with a lot of racing drivers, had his own F3 teams, F3000 teams. So he's, he's helped me set up this launch pad Okay. You know, to help a lot of the youngsters to get into the sport. Wow. So, so that's when, um, you know, when the whole idea was to build a race car for me in India, either an Indian touring car, before I moved into the Asian touring car, we decided well, let's make an Indian touring car because okay. I've been driving single seaters for the last, uh, I would say 15 years. So I thought here on, let me try the saloon cars, which is covered and, uh, it's it's more, I really don't uh, compare it to be safer or anything. Racing is racing, so I said, okay, why not? Let's get into that side of motorsports. Maybe reach world touring car one day. So we started off with Indian touring car, and Peter was remotely working from Sri Lanka to get this whole thing sorted. And he said, you since you're buying, uh, you know, if you're going to be building a race car for yourself, you might as well buy few more cars and start your academy, which you always wanted to. Oh, and, amazing. Nice. And that's when um, I was um, quite surprised to see it was just not me. I, w I was scared in the beginning about starting a team. I didn't know because 
I was on inside a cockpit. Now I don't know how is it going to be outside a cockpit. Correct. Trying to do you know manage cars and build cars. Uh, I never studied mechanical engineering or automotive engineering, but I've learned A to Z of a car by on a circuit, sitting down with mechanics and people, and I I understood that uh, that whole um, attitude was developed automatically where. I see a mechanic. I I would love to show respect to them and uh, and learn something from them. Sit down with them and see what they do. I keep popping out questions. Even stay up till 10 p.m. in the night. You know when they're building engines and cars. So that that actually uh, made me understand. It's just not driving, and I really love this sport so much that I wanted to give it back to, to the people out there. You know, let them come inside. You know, let I could be a channel. Correct. for them to enter motor sports tomorrow Correct. they could graduate into various other categories and probably take them internationally someday so peter yeah. allnut was highly you know um i would say experienced in motor sports and we as driver as a driver i was very experienced i found my friends to be supporting me the same competitors i used to fight with in 2007 and 2008 and 9 i can count all those races i battled for wins with them they have they have caught each other's callers also but the moment i said i wanted to start a team everybody came close and said we want to support me and they said let's do it together so that made me more confident in fact in the last few months it was my friends um, who have been around and supporting me build these cars and not making sure then make sure that i'm not alone here super uh Chetan, my last question to you is: Can you share any one life transformation story which has impacted you strongly? Um, I would say yes. Um, there's quite a, um, impactful moments. There could be many, you know, because every day, Correct. you know, we keep facing different situations. But I would say the most I would say which um, I'm experiencing, I would say, when a transition from a race car driver to a team owner is quite a big move. So everything yes. changes. the people yes. who look at you you know as a, as a race car driver they no longer see you that way it's different correct and then your whole uh, i would say everything has to change so i think it's a new experience and something i would say is play, playing a very big impact but i'm taking it positively but otherwise i've taken up everything as in on a positive note because i know i always say this to myself about challenging the challenges you know if it's a challenge you got to be challenging it Correct. Correct. I've never seen anything impact me so much, but I'm enjoying the new challenge right now. Yes, and you are a learner. So I, I, if you are a learner, I think sky is the limit. You have to be a learner for your whole life. That's right. So here we start our rapid fire round. Uh, and my first question to you is a moment which you cherish with your mom. Um, I rem- I still remember uh, the sight. where i was trying to walk to her my first used you know when i started walking and i was still bleeding and you know i would, I would and my and this would happen in this this hospital where they would make my wooden prosthetic legs so i remember that whole uh, vision of you know that hospital my mom taking me all the time in her bike to actually get me get my prosthetics repaired all the time so those are the moments you know i really remember the most great If you had your human body but head of an animal, then which animal would you pick? A horse. Fantastic. As you are a nature-loving person, what one thing you would do if you become a environment minister of India? I would promote every businessman to actually support agriculture, even if he doesn't own any land. Super. I know you have a farmhouse where you are growing so many. Uh, working across so i i that will be a good suggestion to all i guess <laughs> one food you can eat any given time rasam rasam if <laughs> not big fan of rasam <laughs> if not car racing then what would we, you be doing oh that was a fun <laughs> cricket cricket Yeah, but thing, as in yeah. as in, since you didn't you didn't give me any other choices, no. otherwise I would still say racing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, one thing world does not know about you. 
I still got a lot more to give out there, and and I'm still I'm and I'm still working on it. There's still more coming. There's still more coming. Yeah. Uh, best advice you have ever received. Uh, don't limit your your boundaries. All I will say is, it's all about making your disadvantages as your advantages. Correct. So Be I mean, just to just to add something to it. Um, many people say that it's tough to be, you know, walking around with a prosthetic. It could be painful or anything. But looking at the brighter side of it, I wear uh, prosthetics which weigh only 2.5 kilos together, while a human like, bone and flesh is going to be weighing around seven kilos. So, I would say lightning feet, and I can move faster. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 I, and yeah, I can step on stones. I can walk on fire. I can walk on thorns, and it still doesn't hurt. <laughs> so it's all about making your disadvantages your advantages. You just got to make it work. I think be limitless and be fearless. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one thing you would like to change about yourself? About myself? Control my overconfidence at times. OK. That is a new one I'm hearing. When it's required. Now, sometimes, you know, after the consequence, you realize, but it's also good to be careful sometimes. <laughs> OK. Uh, what you miss the most? My school. One person you admire the most? My wife. What is the best phrase or quote you believe the most? Challenge the challenges. Challenge the challenges. Fantastic. And the last one is describe yourself in three words. Um, <laughs> okay. Joyful. Okay. okay so one uh, second. Overconfident. Overconfident. Okay. A go getter. Go getter. Okay. That was a fantastic one, uh, Chetan. And uh, I think before we log off, what you would like to address to all sports person and sports enthusiasts of India who are striving hard to achieve their uh, goals? I mean, to all my, uh, I would say, colleagues in all the sports, it's, it's important to keep up what you're doing because India, I mean, all the Indian athletes have the potential to be the best out there. Because yeah. we, have pro we have proven ourselves to be the best among each other. Um, there, there is a lot more to be proven out there. So I think it's about a decision you need to take and not wait for somebody to push you out there. You need to go and take the decision. You could be, you just can't be one of the 10 or 10 in the 100, you know, why not the 100, go, 100 athletes go out there and perform. So you never know, in two years down the line, you could be going to Olympics again. You could be representing the country somewhere. So don't lose hopes by what people say. You just got to believe in yourself that if you can, if I can do it without two legs and come on, I'm sure that everybody can do it. So I would say the disability lies in the brains. It's not really out there. So make it work. Very well said, Chetan. And that will definitely inspire and aspire many. Thank you, Chetan, for taking out time and agreed you to share your life journey with us, which will definitely inspire and motivate many. Uh, where where can people reach you if they wish to follow you and your performances? Oh, of course, uh, they can follow my Instagram pages because uh, I have, yes, uh, Chetan Gorada dot racing. That's my handle on Instagram. So okay. that's the only active platform I keep using. But otherwise, uh, in fact, uh, I request everybody to visit questmotorsports.in www.questmotorsports.in okay. you can read a lot more about the team i've started the motorsports company where we want to encourage new talents into the sport it could be you could be from anywhere so we are open here we've been waiting for people to come and get trained probably be the first step into the career here fantastic Chetan. Uh, guys, you know where to visit Quest Motors. In Quest Motorsports. In Quest Motorsports. In 
yes thank you right. chetan thank you chetan and thank you viewers i hope you must have enjoyed the show and also learned and inspired a lot from this episode do not forget to like and subscribe to sport champ youtube channel and thank you chetan thanks for a wonderful evening thank and you, I hope you thank you thanks for having me online thank you so much